The title of this uh, paper is uh, Four Channel Transmit Module with Patch Antenna for 5G Application. So to start, um, for many years, millimeter waves have been considered inappropriate for mobile communication. It's uh, mainly the biggest obstacle is really the propagation. You know, transmitting, receiving, all directions, it's very difficult for that. But as you know uh, or heard, lately there has been a lot of research in the U.S. and South Korea uh, regarding this propagation issue. And, it, you know, the biggest enabler they found out right now is the phased array antennas and beam forming, which overcomes this propagation issue. And a lot of research has been going to implement this. So the bands of in question and a lot of research on this is that 28 gigahertz around that you know, frequency. There is other studies that uh, use 60, 70 gigahertz to see if they can implement it in that frequency. But this paper will describe to you a four channel transmit chain at 28 gigahertz. But one thing I want you to remember as I speak uh, with this paper is it, it is really implemented at the transistor level, at the circuit level. Because most of the papers or most of the things you read is probably at the system level. But this one goes way down at the, uh, as the RF engineer, the microwave engineer, implementing these at the circuit level. So, so this is a picture of the four channel uh, system I, I put together in uh, ADS. This is an ADS schematic. And uh, you can see the power source, 27 gigahertz to 28 and a half gigahertz. So there's four channels, uh, 400 megahertz bandwidth of each one by filters. And there is preamps, the power amplifier, filtering, power dividers, and the phase shifter, which controls the beam. And then interfacing with a patch antenna that was simulated separately in Momentum, EM simulation, and imported in this design to co-simulate, co-simulate everything with the EM simulation. So we got four channels here. So if, if we look at one channel, just looking at one channel here, you can see those preamps, the small signal amplifiers, just to get the gain, are um, implemented and built using the triquent p hemped process. And I received, I got those uh, from Plextech RFI. They worked with me and they supplied me with this design and I really thank them for this. I even got the power amplifier designed on the schematic from Plextech. And this is the filter, this is the power divider, implemented using the Triquent uh, design kit. This has been implemented with the global semiconductor foundry, GCS foundry. Uh, I think the process was indium phosphite. They used indium phosphite dual HBT process for the power amplifier. The phase shifter implemented in Triquent design kit also, and then we have the antenna here. So let me just go uh, briefly showing you the, this is the preamps and it, each stage, there is two of those, have more than 10 dB gain, good return loss, and it has wide band, 22 to 32 gigahertz. So this is just to give me like 20 dB gain before I start implementing this. The, what comes after this is the power amplifier also. And this power amplifier was not completed at the time I implemented this system. I got the schematic, but I don't have the full layout and the whole thing. So I thought I'd bring this very important issue here. When you are a designer working with a vendor or a system person, sometimes you don't want to give them your topology. You, you want to, you know, your IP. So what I did, I took this power amplifier and I generated an X parameter model. Uh, X parameter is a way to model nonlinearity. It's a nonlinear model that replicate exactly what's the PA. So you, you can simulate the PA or you can simulate the X parameter model. It is totally identical. But with the X parameter model, you don't see the IP, you don't see the topology. 
So this is what I did here, the X-parameter model. It has a 20 dB gain and 28 dBm output power maximum. The filters were impl implemented, four of them, for the four channel, 27, 27 and a half, 28, 28 and a half, and 400 megahertz. It's arbitrary. You can have wider band or you can change it. The power divider, basically, it's very wide band and flat and using the Triquin design kit. And the phase shifter, okay, this this is what really is going to control your beam, the phase shifting, you know, in the system. So what I have here is four phase shifters. 22 and a half degrees, the first one. And the second one is a 45 degrees, 0 to 45. And then 90 degrees and then 180 degrees. So by putting the combinations with the 16 states, 4-bit control, you can have anywhere from 0 to 360 degrees with increments of 22 and a half degrees uh, shift. And this is the implementation of it, each one. Now, the patch antenna was designed in ADS also. These are the uh, dimensions of the patch. And this is the frequency, the S11, the return loss. It's about 27 and a half gigahertz uh, on a Rogers Duroid board. And I uh, simulated this in uh, Momentum, EM simulation. So you can see the four patches and uh, that extends here, the S11 for the four patches. This is the signal, this is the lobes, all in Momentum separately. But what I'm going to do next, OK, before I show you the whole system simulating together, there is various, at the system level, there's various implementation of how you're going to construct the system, what is best. It's a trade-off analysis. For example, this is implementation number one. It uses more circuits. If you notice, there is much more circuits. We have eight preamps. We have four power amplifiers feeding to the antenna, whereas this implementation has less circuits and it's still the phase shifter is feeding to the antenna and, you know, you can steer the beam. The difference between those two is, although this has more circuits, but the power, 28 dBm coming the power uh, amplifier, is right next to the antenna, so you're getting more power, whereas this one here, you, you get lost. You lose the power divider, the phase shifter. So unless if you have really enough power and you want to use less circuits, but, uh, but this implementation for the power is much better. You know, you get higher power. So I use the top one for this uh, simulation. And if I take one side of that and simulate it, so you can see I'm getting like 45, d 45 dB gain of the whole system and I'm getting 28 dBm of output power going to the antenna. But now in ADS, when you put this whole system in the schematic, I, for those people who use ADS, there is, there is an app that you can download from the tools menu in ADS. It's called EM Excitation. It's you go to the app manager in tools and just click a check mark and it will add it to your schematic. You will have an EM excitation uh, pull down menu. Once you have this, you execute it. You just check it. It opens a window and it tells you you want to simulate harmonic balance or S parameters or AC analysis or transient along with the momentum. So it's going to combine the momentum EM simulation of the antenna with the whole system simulating whether it's harmonic balance or AC or, you know, combine both of them together. And this is what the simulation I did here for the four. So I went ahead and executed this, the EM excitation. I put, I, I, I hit the simulate button and I wanted to look at the far field. Now what you're going to see here is not only the antenna, it's the whole system together with the phase shifter too. Now, the, 
if you remember, I said the phase shifter is 22 and a half degrees increments before. There is a relationship when you, when you, when you read an article on phase array uh, antennas, there is a relationship between the phase shift angle, 22 and a half degrees, and the beam look angle, the lookup angle of the beam. It's, it's a trigonometric, it's a trigonometric uh, equation that you solve and you can get the relationship between the phase angle of the phase shifter and the beam angle. In this case, 22 and a half degrees, if you calculate it, the lookup angle would be 7.2 degrees. It's, it's theoretical, you know, you can calculate it. So as I change the state of the phase shifter by 22 and a half degrees, you will notice that the lookup angle will change by 7.2 degrees. So here's 7.2 degrees for state zero. And I go to state one, state two, state three, state four for the phase shifter. And so you can see that I am steering my beam with the phase shifter, everything implemented at the transistor level, not at system here. And when you do a phase array antenna, also when you read, the, in theory, the highest value of that lookup angle, the highest value is 120 degrees, which is 60 to the left and 60 to the right. This is in all articles, when you read the articles about phase array antennas and this, that is the maximum you get. So notice here I'm, I'm approaching the 60 degrees, 57.6, and I start seeing the mirror image of the plus and minus 60 degrees. Okay, so you keep going and you just get the, you know, this is the, the phase shifter going through all the states. So you can steer the antenna this way. So in summary, you know, what I showed you basically, and it's really good if you stop by the booth, I can simulate it in front of you. That's even better to see it actually simulating. But I, what I showed you is a system at the transistor level where you combine EM simulation of the antenna and the circuit simulation and beam steering with the state all together. The advantage of this is at the RF level, at the design engineer level, you can see the coupling you can see the, per, uh, like uh, for example, the S22, the output impedance of the system interfacing with the antenna. How does it couple to the other port? All this is accounted for. All this is calculated. So this is really going down all the way down to the implementation level, to the design level. And I would like to acknowledge the people who kind of worked in this uh, paper. We get. Uh, Anil Pandey and Rupam, who are my colleagues from India, you know, who were working with me. And also Plextech, I mentioned RFI, who supplied me with the preamps and the power amplifier that I used here. Um, if you have any questions, please ask me and uh, see me at the booth if you want to see simulation. Yeah, yeah. you can, uh, the question was, I mentioned S parameters and also I showed the PNP out and 28 dBm output power. Um, um, Ed, uh, what, uh, when I did the co-simulation between EM and the circuit, I mentioned about the EM excitation window where you can do can AC, you can do S parameter, you can do harmonic balance and you can do transient. Nick. Uh, yeah, the amplifier has a nonlinear model, and the nonlinear model is also a linear model at the small signal. It, it combines both models. Yeah.